Hey guys, welcome back to PDA, your handheld guide to understanding psychological data analysis. For the last episode, we're going to tackle chi-squared. Now, this is not pronounced chi like the T. We're not talking about T here. T tests were later, or earlier. We're talking about chi-squared. Basically what chi-square measures is if things fit in the expected way. Um, the definition for it is a test that uses the chi-square statistic to test the fit between a theoretical frequency distribution and the observed frequency dis distribution. All that means is seeing if what actually happened lines up decently with what we expect to happen. For example, I play Dungeons and Dragons, so I use a myriad of dice. One of the die is a d4. It's a four-sided die, and since I'm the dungeon master, I want to see if all of my players are using fair dice. So I take a d4, that's their shortened two, or a four-sided die, and I roll it a hundred times. Here's the results. Twenty-two times I got a one, 36 times I got a 2, 19 times I got a 3, and 23 times I got a 4. Now, I can't really look at this and say if it's fair or not. What should happen is if I've got four categories, four sides, four possible outcomes, and I roll it 100 times, the probability tells me that I should get a 1 25 times, a 2 25 times, a 3 25 times, and a 4 25 times but I didn't. That's where the chi-square test of goodness comes Fit Test for goodness of fit comes in. It's this weird looking formula here along with this is the this is a symbol for chi-square. It is called chi and it has and it's squared hence chi-square. It looks like an X but one of the lines is just a little wavier. The formula for it is sigma which again just added up everything. Sigma of the observed outcome, which in this case would be 22, minus the expected, which we expected to get 25 ones, squared, divided by the expected, which is 25. In the same way, you're going to set up a similar table, except instead of x and mu, you're going to have o and e. So you put all your O's here, or your X's, or the observed, which is 22, 36, 19, 23, and then you subtract the expected from it, which in this case we expected to get 25. So 22 minus 25 is negative 3, 36 minus 25 is 11, 19 minus 25 is negative 6, and 23 minus 25 is negative 2. The next step is to square all those numbers. So you square that and you get 9, 121, 36, and 4. After that, we're not done yet because we still got the denominator. You're going to go ahead and divide it by the expected, which was 25. You come up with 0 0.36, 4.84, 1.44, and 0 0.16. Now, as per the sigma, you add all those up and you get 6.8. That is your chi-square statistic. Now, we also have to figure out the degrees of freedom. In this case, you'd almost immediately think, well, degrees of freedom. We have 100 samples, so the degrees of freedom are 99. Wow, that's a lot of degrees of freedom. People who did the chi-square knew this. So they've changed the thing. They changed the degrees of freedom from the number of samples to the number of groups. So since we have four groups, the degrees of freedom are always whatever minus four, one. So four groups minus one, we're left with three degrees of freedom. This lets us move on to our table to find out if our thing is significant or not. And for that, yep, that's right, we're drawing another curve. Okay, we're back with the curve and we've got our chi-squared statistic of 6.8. Now, say we were testing the goodness fit or the fairness of this die 
at the 0.05 alpha level, or the 0.05 level of significance, which is common to psychology, as we all very well know and has been ground into our heads. First, we need to go back to the book and look up the significance for three degrees of freedom, because remember in chi-square, the degrees of freedom are measured not by the number of data points, but rather by the groups. And we have four groups, so there's three degrees of freedom. You go to three degrees of freedom, and you go over to the .05 significance level, and we find that to be significant, you need 7.82, roughly. So 7.82 7 would be our cutoff point right here. And thankfully, well for the player at least, our statistic of 6.8 does not fall within the critical region. However, that's pretty close to me, so I'd rather have them use one of my die instead. If you have any more questions, or you'd just like to know a little bit more information about Chi-Square, follow the link at the end. Did you know Santa actually took a statistics class once? He always had issues remembering which of the hypotheses got an equal sign after it. So he went around campus saying, the null hypothesis, null hypothesis, null hypothesis. In fact, you can still hear him saying, ho, ho, ho. Have a good day and enjoy the rest of your break.